Thinking of buying or renting a spray machine, or maybe you already own one and want to make sure you're using it correctly. If you are a professional painter looking to step up your game, or a do-it-yourselfer wanting to learn some new skills, keep watching, because we're going to inform you on how to use a standard airless paint sprayer. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com, and we love paint. We devoted this channel to providing people like yourself with information that can hopefully help you with your craft as well as your business. Whether you're a pro or an average Joe, we got you covered. While a lot of paint projects traditionally involve brushes and rollers, there are times where it just makes way more sense to use a spray machine to apply paint. That could be for several reasons. Maybe you want to avoid those pesky brush marks or perhaps you're looking for a more efficient way to paint larger areas. In this series, we're discussing the fundamental things that you need to know before operating one of these machines. In the previous installment of this paint sprayer series, our professor of paint sprayers himself, Dazzling Dave, had discussed why someone would want to spray in the first place, the different types of sprayers, and the initial setup of an airless sprayer. Today at the College of Spray Knowledge, let's put this machine to work and show you all how to properly operate a skid mount airless sprayer. This is a class you don't want to miss. The last time we were here at the College of Spray Knowledge, we showed you all the components. Now we're actually going to put it to practice and we're going to put this machine to use and put some paint through it and show you how to paint. Okay, so first step, we're going to prime the machine. What I mean by priming the machine, we're actually going to evacuate all the air out of the machine. Because it's an airless machine, we want no air in the machine. So what we do first is put it into water and then we turn the machine on. But before we turn the machine on, always make sure it's at low pressure. The last thing you want to have is a mishap. Some of the mishaps that could happen is your tube is a little clogged, it blows out, and you shoot everything up in the air. Before we get to pressurizing the machine, we always have to make sure we're being safe. Make sure you have correct eyewear, and make sure this gun is not around anyone that is untrained around this machine. So we're going to turn the machine on, make sure it's at low pressure. So now that we're going, we want to make sure all the air is coming out. You'll see bubbles coming out of the, the return tube. After that, you want to see a steady stream. If it's pulsating in any way, there's a little button back here. Just hit that button a couple times. And that should clear out everything in there. Now that we got the pump all primed up, we have to prime the hose. So you're gonna turn, open up the trigger and turn it to spray. Be sure to open up the trigger before you flip it to spray because it wants to build pressure as soon as you flip it up. As you can see, it's spraying out nice. Let that run for about 30 seconds or so to make sure there's no air absolutely in the hose. Once that you see that it's, it's all cleared out, you're gonna let go of the trigger. It's building up pressure. Now we're going to release the pressure. And whenever you're releasing the, the hose, hold on to this when you're releasing the pressure. Reason being, this hose is gonna to wanna to fly up in the air and the last thing you wanna do is paint the ceiling when you're trying to paint the walls. So now that you got the machine all primed up and ready to go, we're gonna do a pressurized test. Basically what that is, is you're gonna get full pressure with just water in it, just to make sure everything is working properly. When we are uh, pressurizing the machine, please make sure this gun is in a safe place, away from anyone that's untrained on this machine. Um, it does pack a punch, it can break your skin and uh, cause very, very serious injuries. We're gonna turn the pressure all the way up and we're gonna flick the prime all the way up. As you can hear, it's building up pressure. Now we're at full pressure. So now we did our pressurized test, it's fully pressurized. We know everything is good. It's staying still at 3,200 PSI. It's not hiccuping. It's not continuously running. So we are good to go and add our paint now. So guys, now we're gonna introduce paint. Um, basically, you're gonna put your intake into the paint and keep your return into the water. Low pressure again. Last thing you want is something bad to happen while you have paint in it. So now we're gonna just turn it on. We get the same, same thing with bubbles. We're gonna push the bubbles out, but then you'll notice you'll see paint coming through it. As you can see now, we have paint coming through the machine. 
We want to stop that. Now we want to put it back into our paint because we don't want to waste paint. So now that we got paint throughout the pump, we're going to use the gun. So we turn it back on, let it run while it's in the paint. We're going to open up the trigger and go to spray. And just spray that till you see the paint come out. As you can hear, the machine's kind of working a little bit more. It's because we have it at low pressure and the paint is a little thicker than water. Putting in the tip, always make sure that you have no pressure. Give it a little squeeze to make sure there's no pressure in the hose. Put your tip in, loosen that guy a bit, and your tip should just slide right in. Tighten it, and it locks it. So this way is spray, and that way is a cleanup. Guys, for your safety equipment, always have glasses. Um, a respirator is always best. Um, your gloves, only surgical gloves. Reason being is if your hand gets caught into the gun, you wanna be able to throw it away. Surgical gloves will rip and tear. Those big leather gloves or anything like that, they won't, you'll be stuck with the machine and if it's on, it just keeps spraying in your hand. So guys, there's two functions on, on this spray guard. This position, you're spraying up and down. This way, you're spraying back and forth. We're gonna do back and forth right now just because I feel more comfortable doing back and forth. So we're gonna turn the machine on, add a little bit of pressure. Now that we got pressure, we're gonna do our test. So a spray test basically is you're gonna get a piece of cardboard and you're just gonna give it a shot. As you can see, I'm not getting any coverage. It's, it's very, very light and I'm getting tails. So we're gonna add a little bit of pressure. So we give it another shot. As you can see, we're getting a little bit better coverage. We're, we're starting to lose those tails or fingers. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit more pressure. As you can see, we got a nice smooth line. There's no fingers or tails. We're ready to spray. So before we do that, we're just gonna add just a little bit more pressure. So when you're spraying, you're never gonna lose pressure. So when you go to spray paint, please guys, do not continuously spray you'll get runs and you have to roll them out. Your hand physically cannot go fast enough back and forth to prevent any runs. So yeah, so I'm looking at this wall and it really needs a nice fresh coat of paint. As we go, we're just gonna go our first shot. Your second shot is gonna be about 30 to 40% over your last shot. And you're just gonna work your way down, pull your trigger before you hit the wall and release after you've come off the wall. Um, if you do that, you'll get a nice chunk there and it won't look good when you're finished. If you do not do the 30% to 40%, what you get is called a flashing, where it's very, very shiny, dull, shiny, dull. When it's dried, it's gonna look terrible. So basically what you want is a uniformed finish. So you want everything to be nice and uniformed. So guys, if you notice that your fan doesn't come out properly, it's not doing that perfect V, it's going a little bit crazy or you're getting a little bit of a line through it, there's something jammed up inside there. So what you do is just turn it, go off to your surface, off on anything and give it a little shot. It cleans it out and you're back in action again. Now that we've gone through the process of using a sprayer, the next video is all about cleaning. Making sure you properly clean your machine every single time will ensure that it will stay in tip-top shape for as long as possible. A simple mistake could turn into a rather costly one, so make sure not to miss that video. We do two videos every single week on this channel, and it's all about painting and decorating. In the meantime, check this one out. We like to discuss everything from brushes to Balboa mist. Whether it's colors or contractor tips, you can expect it all on this channel, so subscribe if you haven't already. See you on the next one.